Right, I'm gonna show you guys why I prefer to edit my videos rather than live stream. So I, right here, I got the original. Let's see how it looks like. Oh my god, look at that. I like how these two just sort of lines up over here. It looks very 19th century art deco. <laughs> As you can see, that's pretty boring. I didn't even know what I was saying. Like, yeah, so in comparison to that, check this one out, okay? Oh my god, look at that, I like how these two just sort of lines up over here, it looks very 19th century art deco. Right, so in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how I made this 2D graphical impact scene in After Effects. And this is gonna be a condensed version of the one hour live stream that I had the other day, where I had the chance to talk to some of you guys. Hope you're gonna enjoy this one, and let's get into it. I started by creating a square and colored it with a really nice combination of red, purple, and yellow. The square would then scale up as well as rotate with high intensity at the beginning and slow down at the 2 second mark. How do I make my color choices? I've, I've been planning to I've been planning to make a video on that like it's both uh, based on the color principles and also based on my feeling on how on how this color make me feel is I feel like it's a blend of intuition and also the knowledge nowadays everybody got so little uh, attention span I feel like the color is getting more and more saturated to capture the viewers attention a little bit easier I feel like I'm gonna real rotate this here a little bit at this point, I still didn't have the idea for an explosion scene, but the square is starting to become like the foundation for what this animation is going to look like. To highlight the impact a little bit more, as well as to bring in a secondary motion element, using a shape, I added in an expanding streak from the middle, like something you would see coming from an optical flare. What I should have done there, I should have wrote, just rotate the shape, but I feel like this is... Somehow, this is a better way. <laughs> Start this off really thick, and as it get wider uh, in the horizontal side, it's gonna get progressively thinner. What I'm trying to do is trying to achieve a motion graphic sort of uh, sort of impact. I think one of the most important most important aspect of practicing your motion design is to create an impact scene. It feels like it's a good exercise to get your creative juice going and trying to create a like a mumbo jumbo of uh, motion graphics inside of a scene. To make sure the flare speeds up and lingers for a while, uh, in the speed graph, I drop the speed of its reveal face to almost zero pixel per second and slowly ease back up to its final phase, uh, which is where it will seemingly disappear. Over here we can slowly just fade it out so we don't get that thin little slice. In the next few minutes I started adding some more elements to the scene including a square, a square, a circle, a pentagon and as you guessed it a square. All differs in sizes, colors, blending mode and most importantly the speed at which they perform their movements. All of this adding minute details and variation to the animation, uh, making it just a bit more interesting to look at. But right now I'm just going to be creative with uh, shapes and see what comes up. I'm going to create another one, put it in between here and color it yellow. And um, this shape is going to be some spiky, cartoony sort of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse sort of uh, I gave this collision wave a pleasant baby blue followed by a subtle hint of milky white then animated this path so that it starts off small then takes the original shape as the explosion climaxes. My technique was to go to the point in the timeline where the original squares are at their biggest then started drawing the shapes from there uh, based on that setup. That way, it's easier to backtrack and decide the shape of the wave when the animation starts. I mean, the effect in preset này, mình sẽ đánh posterize time này. Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, oh, đợi 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 đợi. Cho nó tập kiểu hoạt hình. Like that. Okay, được đấy. Suy vụ. In hindsight, this was the most necessary part of the process as it helps make the wave look apart from the rest of the shapes as well as breaking the layers into more digestible segments. It's like biting down the paradoxical vermicelli inside of the spring rolls. On one hand, it helps holding all the ingredients together while on the other hand, it helps our taste buds differentiate between the flavors using posterized times on the wave I mean, uh, not on the noodle. Oh, this looks so good. Epic right here. Zivu recommended me to use like a whole frame method or like a posterized time. I put it in, it's like 6 FPS and it just stands out from the crowd, you know what I mean? Sticking with the food metaphor, it wouldn't be spring rolls without the godly dipping sauce, uh, nook mum. To tie all the pieces together, I created a semi-oval shape that was intended to stay at each corner of the scene. Like the sauce, uh, this shape would have a fiery red with a little bit of orange on the outside. Inside of the shape properties, I used the waveform to give it an uneven look, then skewed it using the uh, transform effect. Okay, a little bit of skew like that. Put in another transform. Uh, rotate that. So the shape sort of uh, matches with the outside strokes over here. A little bit of garnishing involves some particles, uh, both black and white, some very special particles. I don't get to preview the color. It's uh, different. How do you feel about this? It's actually it's accidental, but it looks very nice. I'm gonna drag out the opacity up. Let's rotate so that they face the screen. There we go. That looks. You know what this looks like. This looks like the, the PS2 loading screen. Am I, am I being correct? Some wavy smoke like trails and a bunch of smoke caked up by the impact, which are two triangular shapes, each containing two wave warp effects. People are complicated, but you know, at the end of the, of the day, I believe that most people are good people. All they want is the best out of what they do. And if you can sympathize with that, you can definitely talk better with uh, people around you. I'm trying to figure out this wave warp arrangement over here. Video Copilot and Creative Dojo, shout out to those two guys. I think those are like the foundation of all of my... I'm gonna try semi-circle. Um, is that... I want the top to be like... Oh! Like that. It looks more cartoony this way. Let's try that. <laughs> I, like, I like how fluffy it is. Um, oh yeah, um, Creative Dojo. And then I could move on to setting up the scene. Dramatic, kind of like when lightning strikes and the flash up light. Antonio GC, that's a good idea. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, uh, new adjustment layer. I'm gonna call this one an invert. And you know, just this one of those uh, animation design motif where everything just sort of look it still remain the, sa the same shape but everything just look inverted to make that impact more impactful <laughs> after adding a few more details and textures i tried making the scene even more impactfuler by setting up a prior scene where two objects were crashing into each other i keyframed the two balls from either sides of the screen to come in very quickly and meet at the center, where I will cut to the scene with our graphical explosion. This one's gonna gradually speed up over here until it reaches. <laughs> that killer gave it an black and then delay the explosion. Let's try that. That sounds, that sounds like a good idea. I tried to buy some more time by adding a frame where it would feature a little text saying impact on a predominantly blank screen, hoping it would not take away the momentum we had built up to feature the scene. 
it turns out to work tremendously and just goes to show me that adding a little bit of context really helps sell the impactfulation of the scene. Alright, guess this is where I'm gonna end it right now. I think we arrived at some where that I think is really good, looking really good right now. I'm gonna, yeah, that was fun guys and thanks for tuning in, thanks for hanging out with me. Alright, so after the stream ends, we got this nice little rendering of two objects coming into the scene and creating creating an impact. Personally, for me, I think it's one of the most accessible and one of the most immediate exercises you can do in After Effects if you're just starting out, um, is creating an impact scene. I hope this video has inspired you to do one of your own, and hope you guys enjoy the process of me making this video. Uh, yeah. I'll catch you guys in the next one.